This morning's guest has worked for nonprofits for 34 years. Now he's moved here. I think we're going to profit. You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Architectural Surfaces on Cannon Road off of Highway 501 in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the American Heart Association and we're visiting with the Waccamaw Division's Director of Corporate Relations, Bob McConnell. Good morning, Bob. Good to see you, Thank Greg. you so much for coming in early My on pleasure. a Thursday morning. My pleasure. The ex exciting opportunity you join on April 30th. You're, th this is a new position, uh, d just opened up literally the 1st of May. I am the new guy at the American Heart Association office, and uh, I'm thrilled to be there. And of course, the office is. Did you walk over here this morning? No, but I, I, I could have done that. Right. Yeah. It's almost across the street, Gum Plaza there, right on Highway 501, where the Heart Association has been located That's for years. I think you all are scheduled to move to a new location soon. Uh, in, next month, we're going to move uh, out on 44th Avenue North, I believe. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Literally next month in July. Right. Mm -hmm. That's tremendous. That'll be a big move. Yeah, all the boxes are in the office, all packed. And <laughs> we'd like to move them over there, actually. I'm but, sure that'll be um, a, a, a welcome uh, addition. Of course, the fiscal year starting uh, the 1st of July. It'll be nice to be in there at the beginning of the year. That's correct. Yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Absolutely. So, are you originally from the area, Bob? No, I grew up in Miami. Um, back when Miami was a little different town than it is today. And um, I worked in the, the nonprofit world for 34 years. 34 years? Right. Wow. And uh, when I um, started in the nonprofit world, I worked for the Scouts for 14 years in mm -hmm. Sacramento, California and then Louisville, Kentucky, and then Tucson, Arizona. And then I, I switched over to the, the uh, United Way and was in the United Way system for 20 years mm -hmm. and worked in the Cleveland United Way in Griffith, Indiana, and then in Fort Lauderdale where I served as the president for 10 years. The president of the United Way there in Fort Lauderdale That's for, for a decade. For a decade. Wow. Yeah. That must have been exciting. It was. I mean, I went to Fort Lauderdale, and that community grew by over 600,000 people in the 10 years I was there. Is that right? Broward County. Right. And a uh, wonderful place to be. Got really crowded um, at, near the end. But uh, then we decided to move to South Carolina, where things were uh, a little slower and uh, not as much traffic. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. What was it, anything in particular that prompted you all to make the move? Well, my mother-in-law moved in, over to uh, and bought a house in Myrtle Beach Golf and Yacht. Great. And my wife and I came here to visit uh, for Thanksgiving back in, um, must have been 19, or 2003. And right. uh, while we were here, we had an interesting experience in that I... Um, was at a gas station out on 707 mm -hmm. and I mistakenly left my credit card uh, on top of the gas machine and drove away and went to uh, down the road and about 10-15 minutes later I um, noticed that my card was gone and I said to my wife she says well let's go back and see if it's there well living in South Florida my card probably would not have been there. I won't <laughs> say any more than that. But went back to the gas station, walked inside, and the lady at the gas station said, oh, yes, somebody picked it up and turned it in. Mm. And I thought, wow, what great values mm -hmm. uh, expressed through that action. And so I have two daughters, and so I thought, gosh, this would be a great place for them to be. Right. My wife can be close to her mother, so here we are. That's amazing. What a yeah. great story. Well, it was, it was a Loss great Loss for Broward County and a big gain for O'Ree County. Yeah. So we're really thrilled to be here. And um, my wife works for Pitney Bowes in this Good. community. So she 
travels all around uh, to Florence and around, and so it's sure. been really great for us. Absolutely. You said you have two teenage daughters. That's correct. I have one goes to uh, St. James and the other goes to the Art Institute. Oh, and good. And she'll be a senior next year, and my youngest daughter will be a junior. How exciting. Having y y teenage daughters in the house must be fun, Bob. Um, on most days. <laughs> you were an outnumbered guy. Yeah. I three have, to one. I also have three grown boys. Uh -huh. So I've had the boys and now the girls. And um, I could talk to you about that for a long time. That's right. So uh, y your boy's mother was outnumbered. It was four to one then. And now you're outnumbered three to one. Yeah, I don't know what's going on most of the time. <laughs> we we uh, we're scheduled to have uh, Steve Shield with us tomorrow, who's the acting chair of the computer science department at Coastal Carolina University. Mm -hmm. He has four daughters, and at yeah. one time had all four in the house at the same time. I've heard him say before, a lot of pantyhose around the house. Yeah, I uh, w we were very fortunate. The house that we we built a house when we moved here, and um, we built kind of a suite on the second floor so I don't have to deal with all of that that often um, right. I don't venture upstairs too often so. <laughs> you know where your place is Bob that's yeah. great what's that been like joining the American Heart Association after uh, 30 feet four years in non in the nonprofit world but 10 years as a president to now be out on the street uh, at some level as the director of corporate relations well I, I'm I'm loving every minute of it. When when I worked through my career, um, both in the Scouts and in in the um, United Way, what you do is you progress up and you take on more and more management responsibilities and personnel responsibilities and all of that. And what I really love is fundraising. Mm -hmm. And so what this has done is give me the opportunity to go back and really do that which I really love. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I moved here, I had this notion that I would retire, and that didn't last really very long. <laughs> and then um, I thought to myself, well, I have all of this experience. Why not use it to benefit the community? Right. So here I am. And what, what is, not to cut you off, excuse me, what is it about the Heart Association that, uh, of course, having spent uh, a decade uh, there with the, as a president of the United Way, but 20 years in the United Way system? Right. What, what is it about a particular organization? Well, I had, I lost both of my parents to, uh, to heart disease, mm. and they both had, uh, died of heart attacks. And I really didn't put that together. Um, and then when I started doing the interview process with the American Heart and, and started to learn more about the American Heart Association, the fit just seemed to, to be better and better. And then I had an experience of my second week on the job where we went over to um, McLeod Hospital and, and uh, watched a open heart surgery. Mm which is a really unique experience and if mm -hmm. anybody gets the opportunity I was pretty squeamish about it initially but it was a it was a wonderful experience and my mom died in exactly that same situation mm. and so I'm watching this and what it did is it helped me get closure about that part of my life mm -hmm. and so um, to me I feel really blessed to be working for the American Heart Association at this time in my life and uh, with both my parents um, uh, dying of a heart attack it would make me kind of a high-risk guy mm -hmm. uh, from a hereditary standpoint and um, so I'm just really thrilled to be there and to be contributing to that to their good work. Bob, you said your mother died in the same instance. You mean she died on an operating table? She, she, my. I was living in Tucson at the time. My mom was the kind of person that she didn't want the kids to worry. Mm -hmm. So she called me and said, "I'm going to go in tomorrow morning <clears throat> and have a double bypass bass operation." I said, "Well, do you want me to come?" And she said, "No, I'll call you when I get done." And then, of course, the call never came. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, but it was always kind of a mystery thing. She just went away. Mm. And uh, what was really terrific about that experience was that we got a chance to talk to the uh, physician who did the operation, and he was so inspirational. There's so much we don't know about heart disease and, and 
and healthy, living a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And uh, he spent 45 minutes talking to us about that. It was it, if anybody gets the opportunity to do that, they should they should do it. Even though she lost her life, there was a, something good that came out of that. The, uh, Absolutely. The yeah. opportunity to learn from a doctor. And there's so many amazing doctors. And the Heart Association's mission, I think you shared earlier before we began filming some of the, uh, the, the, the real push right now to reduce cardiovascular disease across the country. What is that for viewers who may not be familiar with that, Bob? Well, for, for a, a fellow like myself who spent so much time in the nonprofit world, um, when I started looking at the American Heart Association, the thing that really struck me the most was their, they made in 1999 a commitment to reduce uh, deaths uh, associated to, with cardiovascular disease and stroke by 25 percent. Mm. Now, most nonprofits really deal with symptoms and not the core, cause, right. the core issue. And from my seat in the house, I. I look at that as a very gutsy um, goal to set for yourself, mm -hmm. and their results have been terrific. Right? They, they've not they've not achieved those results by themselves. They've done it in concert with the medical community and others. Mm -hmm. But uh, since 1999, deaths associated with cardiovascular disease and stroke have gone down by 23 percent, mm -hmm. and um, that is phenomenal. So I, I think that um, sometimes just hanging very challenging goals out there really makes organizations better and the American Heart Association certainly did that. Absolutely and of course you all here the Waccamaw Division, Ori and Georgetown County have had some very large goals for being I guess one of the smaller offices in the state of South Carolina but some of the, the, the bigger fundraisers, probably an office that has with the the walk, the ride-a-thon, the gala, and of course, jump rope for heart serving a large area. But those three big events probably raising close to or more than any other office in the state. I actually don't know that. I've not been in the office that long, long enough, enough sure. you know, to know mm -hmm. that. But I've been very impressed by the work of Tammy Eves and the volunteers uh, mm -hmm. in this community uh, to raise money. And raising money is just part of it. I mean. The raising of the money allows the American Heart to invest in the research and the other uh, programs that they provide. But they've gone a step further, and they're actually trying to tackle the um, changing people's lives to, to get them to live a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, with this new START program, it's right. very impressive to me. And uh, I I was a long distance runner, and and. Uh, ran more than a thousand miles for ten years in a row, mm. and I think, given my my her hereditary history, mm -hmm. uh, that may be why I'm here today. Because certainly, um, both my parents uh, left uh, um, early in life, so I'm really impressed with that notion. It's not just the money; it's about education as well. Mm -hmm. How do you think your past involvement, the 14 years in, the, in scouting, Boy Scouts of America, 20 years in the United Way system, will help you contribute the most to the American Art Association and ultimately to the community, Bob? Well, I think certainly I've had fundraising experience. I've worked with literally thousands of volunteers. Right. And um, that is not... Uh, that is not something I need to be trained to do. It almost right. becomes instinctive after a while. Mm. And to me, working with volunteers is one of the blessings of working in the nonprofit mm -hmm. world. Um, I, I've worked uh, over the years with so many wonderful people in every community, and I'm starting to meet those folks here. And part of my job is to kind of orchestrate their uh, willingness to give back to the community to, to, to maximize our effect. Oh, yeah. And I think that um, I'm un I have a unique uh, um, opportunity here to do that because I know how to do that already. Mm -hmm. And now it's just learning about American Heart, learning about the, the local community, and then pulling that together. Right, right. And volunteers really are that vehicle. And of course, you know, we think about the tiny staff that, that you all have across the street with you and Tammy and Debbie and uh, the, the entire, the very small staff that has to get out and do a heck of a lot. And that without volunteers, 
there would literally be no events. There'd be no hard walk, no hard ball, no horseback ride-a-thon, events raising a quarter million dollars, three hundred thousand dollars, even four hundred thousand dollars a yeah. year. You couldn't do them without volunteers. Well, volunteers are, as you know, the core of any nonprofit organization, and uh, there's no way that we could do what and have the impact that we have if it wasn't for the volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just wonderful. I. When I first started in this business, people would say to me, Bob, as a fundraiser, how can you do that work? Mm -hmm. Well, the, what helps me do the work is the understanding that people want their world to work. They want it to be better. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of nonprofits like the ones I work for in the American Heart is it gives them a way to do that mm -hmm. in, in an effective way. And so it's a the best of all possible situations for somebody like me. Right. Having raised funds for more than half your life for the nonprofit world, Bob, what do you think is your greatest challenge? We've got about 10 minutes. You know, you think about some of the challenges facing you. Of course, mm -hmm. your personal challenge, as you said, learning the organization, learning the community. But after some of that's accomplished or fully accomplished, what do you see as the biggest challenges for you going forward in your position as Director of Corporate Relations for the American Art Association? Well, the, the biggest challenge any nonprofit has, in, in addition to the work that they do, uh, particularly in the fundraising, is having access to people so they can tell the story. And mm. if you tell the story in an effective way, people will contribute because they want their, wor their world to work. Um, but getting access is very difficult. The American Heart has done some wonderful things, I believe, on with online giving and that kind of mm -hmm. thing in order to be able to give people the ability to communicate with others and um, uh, uh, share their story in a way that they can communicate with lots of people, right. which helps spread the word. Um, so the, the greatest challenge is always getting access and, and being able to um, spread the word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of course access to folk you know, as you're dealing with folks on very busy schedules, oftentimes as you said you've got to encourage them to look at vehicles like on online giving, heart.org or Americanheart.org has got a great vehicle and of course through the start campaign. Share with viewers real quick and of course having just joined the Heart Association on April thirtieth, you know, starts very new not only to virtually everyone in the community but to yourself as well. Share with viewers about the, uh, the, there had been a heart walk for so many years, just a one-day event. Now mm -hmm. it's become an annual event. What's the, what's the background with START? Well, the, the, the heart walk has, I, I guess, been around for almost as long as the Heart Association has been long around. Long time, right. The, the START element of it is really unique, I believe. And it's about trying to talk to companies and to individuals about changing their their um, behavior, if you will, uh, to become more healthy. And um, the notion is if you start walking today, you'll live longer tomorrow. Right. And apparently for every two hours of walking, you gain a year or an hour of, uh, of extended life, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so that's they're using the two-for-one notion. Mm -hmm. And walking seems to be the exercise that most people will continue. And will, will uh, can, you know, that part of exercising, right, right. you got to do things that, peop that you will continue to do forever. Mm -hmm. And anybody can walk pretty much and, and do it forever. So. Um, the emphasis that American Heart has put on that is really coming through the start. So we're trying to work with companies to get them to start uh, healthy programs within their companies that will go year-round. Right. This ties truly into that what you call a gutsy move there, mm -hmm. trying to push for a 25 percent reduction in cardiovascular disease and stroke by a certain year and to see the improvement. I think you said 23 percent now, but when childhood obesity is on the uh, is on the radar screen when obviously uh, even smoking and other things maintain as well as adult obesity right. you've got to wonder will we ever get to that 25 percent number i know they're pushing real hard but getting walk uh, as opposed to just a one-day event a celebration 
uh, of um, raising funds for the American Art Association, as you say, to make it an annual event is very special and, and very gutsy. Right, and, and you really do it every day. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to get out the door and walk every day, and it has to become a habit. Right. And that's really what American Heart is trying to get folks to do. Mm -hmm. so. You know, when you think about, um, was it something in your early childhood that spurned that interest in joining um, the nonprofit world, Bob? What was it uh, growing up? Was it a family member? Was it a, a loved one, a teacher even, who made you think that the... Mm -hmm. The moment where, when I decided to do what I do, I remember sitting, I went to school at Ohio State. In, in, in Ohio State, you tend to be in very large classes right. many times. Yeah. I was in a class in Ohio State in the balcony, and I, the professor was talking about the difference between your job and your work. Mm. And your job is that which you do to earn money, to su support yourself. And your work is what you leave after you're gone. Mm. It's the difference you make in your community and your world. And at that moment, I knew that what I really wanted to do is combine those two. Mm -hmm. And so what I've been able to do is, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful way to live your life, but I get to contribute back to my world each and every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's kind of where I made that decision and how I got here today. So it was as a college student in yeah. Columbus, Ohio, yeah. to, to think about that. Yeah. Uh, that opportunity to be able to uh, to be in college and to have a an awakening like that yeah. that's wonderful did that uh, did that bug touch any of your other family members any uh, your brother or uh, any of other other siblings who um, all of my boys um, one of them is a teacher in Columbus uh, the other is uh, works at um, the supercomputer center in Columbus Ohio but he is on a uh, the city commission and is working with um, with uh, gangs and those types of really? people. Really? Yeah. Great. And, Good. Uh, I went to visit him a month ago and uh, um, talked to guys, gang members on the street corner and uh, we got them to organize and, and remove graffiti from parks in the community and worked mm -hmm. on Sunday before I got on the plane, you know, removing graffiti and so he has that uh, instilled in him and is doing a terrific job and my my middle son um, actually worked um, overseas in the Czech Republic uh, trying to uh, work with um, um, closing down nuclear power plants that were unsafe uh, visited Chernobyl and places like that. Is that right? Yeah. Tremendous. Yeah, so um, they all have... So all three of your boys have gotten uh, yeah. some of that bug yeah. from you. And I think it makes them better people. It makes us all better people. Mm -hmm. When you think about so many, uh, we talk about I interfacing with volunteers, what are some of the th things you're looking for most to prominently, Bob, for, for persons in the community, whether as volunteers or even in a d donative fashion to assist you in your position as Director of Corporate Relations and in the American Art Association in general? Well, what I'm working on right now is building teams uh, to work, uh, to participate in the walk on October 13th of this year. And essentially, it's not a difficult process. What a company or even an individual can do is say, yes, I want to be a walk team. All they have to do is contact us and um, we ask them to, to commit to raise money mm -hmm. and walk on that day and, um, and then walk between now and then yes. and create that healthy lifestyle. And um, that's what I'm working on. We raise money in the walk two different ways. One is through the walkers themselves and through the teams. And the other way is through co corporate sponsorships. Good. We're working really hard on the corporate sponsorship right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so hopefully we will raise uh, and exceed our $295,000 goal. It's a $295,000 goal. Yes, Big goal. Saturday, October 13th. 
And if a viewer wanted to learn more, they could call the office number. Is that the that 626 is 3939? That is correct. They could call there. They could call me at 282-2903, uh, okay. which is my direct number. Or they can email me at uh, robert.mcconnell, M-A-C-C-O-N-N-E-L-L, at heart.com or dot org. Heart.org. That's fantastic. Yeah. Bob, thanks so much. I'm sorry we've my run pleasure. out of time. Great having you this morning. Thank you, Greg. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with the Director of Corporate Relations for the American Art Association, Bob McConnell, coming up next. The date's a simple one. October 13th, the time. Registration's 9, the walk's at 10 o'clock. The place, Broadway at the Beach. Broadway at the Beach in October. What a great time to be out there. Of course, the phone number, real simple, 626-3939. Or you can reach Bob directly at 843-282-2903. Take the time to pick up the phone. You heard him talk about that date, October 13th. 17 weeks away, but it's getting close. You've got the time to get a team together. But even if you don't get a team together, take the time to get out and walk. Walk. Start now. Start walking. Get out there. It could really make a difference in your life. could add not only one year, but two, maybe even three years to your life. Pick up the phone, 843-626-3939. You can be involved in helping fight heart disease and stroke.